No goofing around this time, Roy. Serious. It's his wicked review. <laughs> everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower, and this is Week in Review. Each week we take a look back at the stuff we did over the past week, and we tell you what we thought about it, and uh, give you short summaries. And then you can click the link in the description if you want to see more. Let's get going. Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia. Here's what I did this week. I reviewed Jin. That's with a D at the beginning. Uh, and I gave that a 7.5 out of 10. This is a Euro-style game in which you are... Moving around, gathering uh, helpers, gathering these mages, gathering energy, gathering coin and scrolls, trying to capture these gins, stick them in bottles, and cork up those bottles, and, and I guess sell those guys off for glory, for victory points. It's an interesting game. It's got a cool, quick, quick snappy turns feel to it, but the whole thing does get repetitive uh, before the game is over, and uh, it... it Lacks a general sort of sense of excitement. Uh, uh, but I like the interconnected gears in it, and uh, I, I think it's the, the gin theme helps it stand out from other sort of by the numbers Euro style games. So it's a pretty good one. Uh, I reviewed Flock Together. I gave this one an 8 out of 10. This one is, also suffers actually from similar concepts, similar ideas. It's got some repetitive uh, feel to it. Uh, but the whole thing is cooperative. It has a very charming look, a very charming theme, uh, some neat progression to what you are doing, and just a lovely production. It's kind of a lovely package. It's a game that, while I play, I can't help but smile. Uh, it makes me content to, to play this game. Um, and it suffers from a couple of small things. Again, that repetition, uh, feeling a little samey from session to session. Uh, not holding your hand. I wish it did that a little more, actually, uh, while you're learning so that you understand what's going on. But the whole thing has a, a really charming, cooperative nature to it. And then lastly, I reviewed the latest Unmatched set. This is Slings and Arrows, the Shakespearean set. And I gave this one a 9 out of 10. I love Unmatched as it is, and I think this set is actually probably one of the very best sets they've put out. It is cohesive. It is interesting. There is no dud in the set. They all have a very clever concept that is both thematic, if you know Shakespeare, and you you know it kind of makes you go, I get it, nice. And if you don't or don't care, they're just cool fighters, and they're interesting and powerful. I love the arena that you get in this one. The Globe Theater is actually very cleverly designed, very feels claustrophobic, feels interesting. The whole set is wonderful, and I certainly recommend it if you like the theme, or just if you like Unmatched and want four new distinct fighters. So there you go, that's it for me. See you on the next one. For me this week, I took a look at Unmatched Slings and Arrows, and I love Unmatched as a system as a whole, and this set, even though I don't care that much about the plays and stuff for Shakespeare, I still gave this an 8.5 just because I really enjoy the characters. I love the map for it. I love the whole like theatrical stage and the way that the map lays out. And if you want to check out that review, make sure to check it out for all of our in-depth thoughts on all the different stuff. Well, that's what I looked at this week. Chris me once, bam, ba, 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 ba. Chris me twice, bam, ba, 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 ba. Chris me deadly. It's Chris time. Hey everyone, this week I took a look at uh, four different things. The first of which was Purim. I gave this one an 8 out of 10. It's a cooperative game and takes place during the Book of Esther from Fun Hill Games. A solid, really good cooperative game. Unique card play I haven't seen before. And it's an area control game that's cooperative and you need to control every area of the board. I think that the end game triggers of this one are really tricky to manage. A hard one to win, but really satisfying when you do. Uh, so an 8 for Purim. Uh, Slings and Arrows, the newest set for Unmatched, I gave an 8.5. I think that the characters in this are all very creative and clever. Uh, Titania is the one I, I think is kind of the most wild with the way that the magic, the glamours come out. But the, uh, but the witches, I think, are probably my favorite in that set to play. 
But I think my favorite feature of this is actually the map. The Globe Theater map is, it feels so different. So, an excellent set that you can add to your unmatched, cooperative, or competitive. Works well for the multiplayer, actually, because of the large arena. And it works well two-player, just dueling, even. So, an 8.5. Next up, Foundations of Metropolis. This is the reasonable production, the reasonable size and reasonable costing version of Foundations of Rome. I think that this game is excellent. I really like the tone, the timbre of the game, the timing of everything with it, and it doesn't take up an entire huge calyx shelf. So huge props for them getting the trays to still hold all the pieces as you store the game, even vertically. They did a lot of things with this one that I think make this one excellent. It's so good. And now it's something that's also more reasonable to own and less daunting. The last thing I took a look at was Trickster's Table. This is an app that has multiple trick-taking games on. I didn't give this one a score, but I do think that it's excellent. It's a free app that you can download. You can donate to uh, Dan, the programmer of it, to support him and the designers who give their consent to put these games all into one app. And I really like it. It's a way that you can play against bots of a lot of different games, several of which are hard to find, out of print type things. So I think that this one's a fantastic and cool little app. If you like trick-taking games, play some really neat ones in Trickster's Table. So. That's been Chris time. All right, two games for me this week. First up is Flock Together. I came in at an eight for this game. Man, was I charmed by it. I think this is a fantastic setting. It's really sold by the Andrew Bosley art, which is just absolutely engaging. It's full of puns, which I'm usually not a fan of, but I find in this one, they're just charming. They're, they just made me chuckle enough, go, that was pretty clever. But I really also love the character development in, in the play session here, where you start as a little baby chick and you're just that much more, you're just very excited to level up and upgrade your character um, and go from your little baby chick to your big hen, you know, whether it's the, the big Attila the hen, you know, who's fighting or uh, Sherlock, you know, it's just, you're really excited about each of those level ups, which leads to interesting decisions on how to use your resources. So when you get food, are you gonna eat it to level yourself up eventually and grow into the big strong chicken you can be? Or are you going to use it to power yourself into a fight? So interesting decisions, the game can go a little bit longer and feel repetitive, but ultimately it's just a really fun cooperative family weight game. So I really enjoyed Flock Together, came in at an 8. Also, I took a look at Jin, which I came in at a 7.5 on. This one had some really intriguing mechanisms to it. I loved the city, how you're going around, taking your little micro actions on your turn, keeps the game flowing quite quickly. Some really interesting decisions on how you're going to get the resources you need as you can get them to diff uh, from different places. So it feels like that efficiency puzzle. But again, similar to Flock Together, it can get a little repetitive. Um, this one more so in the actual gameplay, and that's really what brought it down for me. The game has great modularity, so game to game is very different, but actually in that session, about halfway through, maybe pushing to three quarters, I, I feel like I've seen it all and I'm ready to push end game scoring, and unfortunately it's just not quite there. So it runs a little bit long for the, the nature of the quick terms turns and the limited things you do on your turn. But very much enjoyed it and found it very interesting puzzle to solve. So Jin is a 7.5 for me. Let's keep going. Hey everybody, I'm Joey Evans and here are the games I reviewed this week. First off, there was Harmonies. Harmonies is a kind of a brain burning pattern building style game. Sort of like has a Cascadia feel to it. I thought it was fine, I enjoyed it. Um, won't gravitate to it, but I did enjoy it. If you like this kind of thing, it's, I gave it a seven. Another one is a Euro game called Gin. It's a Euro game where you're pretty much capturing genies and you're putting them into bottles and your mages going around the board. Had a lot of good Euro mechanics in there. I came in at a seven on this as well. Really enjoyed it. And then finally, Foundations of Metropolis, which is kind of the new Foundations of Rome, which is they make it a bit more manageable. A smaller box, but it's more of a modern day setting. Feels just like Foundations of Rome. I love this game. I think it's great for gamers and non-gamers alike. Like, um, I gave this a nine. So those are the games I reviewed this week. For me, me and my daughters reviewed the Unlock Extraordinary Adventures. We loved two of them. One we were not as thrilled about, the detective one, but two out of three is not bad. I give it an 8.5 overall. Uh, then I took a look at Foundations of Rome, the new expansion for that, gave it an eight. 
Not an expansion you need, for sure. You don't have to play this one with the base game at all. But it does add some fun things and makes the outside squares worthwhile. Uh, we did our Four Coins RPG. If you never watch us play our role-playing game, it's a lot of fun. This was episode 9. And uh, yeah, some really crazy stuff happen. happens every time, really. Uh, then uh, we I reviewed Flock Together with uh, Camilla and Z, and this one's almost there. Amazing production, great cooperative game elements to it. Just a few things kept me from loving it, so I gave it a 6.5. Uh, then uh, Foundations of Metropolis. This is the normal size version of Foundations of Rome. I love this game, a Dice Tower Essential game. I think it's one of the best games I've ever played. Very fantastic, 9.5. Ruby and me reviewed the Morrison Game Factory, another escape room style game with a really strong story in it. Uh, just a lot of really cool things happening in this one. 8.5. Z and I took a look at some magic decks. Still enjoying them. Uh, we played some of the uh, uh, Fallout ones and some cowboy decks. So we talked about them. And we reviewed Harmonies. Harmonies is a little game where you're making patterns and I'm kind of fading on these games. But this one just really felt chill to me. So I gave it an 8 out of 10. And then uh, I did a video on am I a professional reviewer? So am I? I don't know. I guess. Watch the video. Anyhow, that's what I did last week. Thanks for watching. This has been Week in Review. And I'm Tom Vassell on the Dice Tower. Hey folks, thanks for joining us for that video. If you haven't yet, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hey, make sure you check out what's happening where I'll cover an app on an iOS or a Switch device, and you can check it out along with me. Thanks very much. You've been watching The Dice Tower.